Let me set the stage for you. Imagine, you've gone to visit some friends a few towns over for the evening. As you sit in the living room watching fast how-to videos, spring is beginning all around you outside. Icicles are melting, plants are beginning to come to life, and your sump pump is working overtime to make sure that your basement stays dry. Suddenly, back at home, the power goes out. You've got about two hours to make it home and take action before your basement begins to flood. Wouldn't it be great if you had a way to know that? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can. I've been there. I got a call from a neighbor once telling me about how the power was out and I better get home. It sucked. Driving home the whole way, not knowing exactly how long the power had been out before the neighbor called, wondering what I was gonna find when I got there, how bad it would be, would there be any damage, how long it would it take me to clean it up, how much would it cost me to clean it up. It's impossible to keep your mind in a good spot. Overall, it is a terrible experience. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. This mess right here, this is my server rack. In this rack lives my Blue Iris server, an Intel NUC running Home Assistant, an Intel NUC running Plex, a couple of old ASIC miners, and my network equipment. I know, I know. Go ahead and roast me in the comments. At some point, maybe I'll have the spare time and money to get a proper cabinet and make a video about redoing all of this. But for now, this relay rack that I inherited for free is all I've got. Down on the bottom is my UPS. It's a trip light 1500 volt amp with an external battery pack for extended runtime. And according to Nut, it will power all this gear for somewhere around 90 minutes if the power goes out. So what's Nut? That's the topic of this video. Allow me to explain how it works. Nut stands for Network UPS Tools. It's available for most Linux distros and it's also available as an add-on for Home Assistant. It doesn't require much you can actually run it on a Pi if your Home Assistant server isn't near your UPS for whatever reason. On the Nut website, they list a version for Windows, but it doesn't work. Don't even try. It's over a decade old and they really should take it down. But anyway, you just connect your UPS via USB to the device running the Nut server and Nut auto scans for available UPS devices and starts reporting on them. FYI, every UPS that I've ever seen only has two methods of connecting to a server. The expensive ones have ethernet connections, which is outside the scope of this video, and the consumer grade ones have USB-B connections. That's this right here, this kind of square looking end. Most of the UPSs on the market include one of these cables, but if for whatever reason yours didn't, you can get the cable on Amazon for like six bucks or something silly. I'll leave a link in the description. Anyway, with NUT and the associated HA integration, you can monitor all sorts of things about your UPS. What the input voltage is, how much runtime do you have, are the batteries healthy, is the device online or running on battery, and a lot more. Then, you can use this information to configure automations to send you a push notification when the power goes out or when it's been out for an extended period of time so that you can rush home or call someone to help you out by running over to your house. I also configured an automation to let me know when the batteries are in need of replacement. Talk about helpful. You can also configure automations to take actions, such as to shut off the water main using a shutoff valve in case the power goes out in the winter because then your heat would go out as well, right? You wanna make sure to minimize damage if a pipe freezes and bursts. You can even configure it to gracefully shut down systems that are connected to it in order to preserve runtime for more important things. For example, when the power is out, I don't need to worry about using my Plex server, and I also don't need my 24 port switch since just about everything connected to it has also lost power. By shutting these things down, I can conserve power for what's important to me. My water shutoff valve, home assistant, my internet connection, and my sump pump. To shut down Windows PCs cleanly, I use the HASS agent. And for power on, I just configure the BIOS to power on automatically after power is restored in conjunction with a Zigbee outlet, but that's a different video. So for now, 
let's get into Nut. So let's take a look at what it takes to set this solution up. The first thing you'll need to do, obviously, is connect your UPS to Home Assistant using the USB cable. Once you've done that, go over to Settings, Add-ons, and then add Network UPS Tools. Under the Configuration section, enter a username and a password. I've just entered some nonsense here for the video. I strongly suggest that you enter a more secure password. Then provide a name for your UPS. If you've got multiple UPSs, that's outside the scope of this video, unfortunately. So the documentation on that is relatively clear. Go and give that a look and you'll be able to get that set up without too much problem. Once you've named your UPS, go ahead and start that add-on. Once that add-on is started, then you'll want to go back to settings and you'll want to go to integrations. And then you'll want to add the Network UPS Tools integration. Now, it's very important when you configure that, that this is the server that you use. This A0D7B954-NUT colon 3493. It took me a long time to figure that out. I had to dig through a whole bunch of stuff. It is buried in the documentation, but if you're running NUT as an add-on, then this is what you need to use in order to make that work. You can't point it at the HAIP address, none of that stuff. Trust me, just enter this when it asks you to configure it and it'll connect and you'll be all good. Then you'll see your UPS device. You'll get battery charge, input voltage, load, output voltage, status, status data, OL means online, uh, OB means on battery. You'll also be able to see battery chemistry, which in this case is lead acid the battery runtime, voltage, the current apparent power, input line frequency, load reboot timer, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can use all of this information to configure automations to do whatever it is that you want to do uh, based on information from this. So I've created three different automations so far and I've got more to go, but let's take a look at these so far. So the first is whenever the UPS data changes to RB, right? So RB is the code for replace batteries. And so that's the trigger. And the action then is to send a notification to my phone that says replace batteries in the UPS. And the title is batteries and main data rack UPS require replacement. Hmm. I think I've got those backwards actually. Let me fix that right now. So, the title should be replace batteries in UPS and the message should be that. I don't like how this is laid out here for, for sending those notifications. I always get those backwards, but that's better. Uh, but then under the data section, um, I'm setting a battery arrow down outline for the notification icon and the color for that is red. So next up, is the notification of power outage. And so that is when the UPS status data changes to OB, which is on battery for one minute, then I wanna send a notification to my phone and my wife's phone. Uh, it's the same, and this is a TTS message that says the power is out at home and the media stream is alarm stream max, priority high. I want to know this, right? And the final automation that I've created so far is to uh, shut off the water during a power outage. So when the battery runtime falls below 600, which is measured in seconds, right? So when there's less than 10 minutes remaining on the battery, uh, then at that point, I want to turn off the water main using my Zeus Titan water valve actuator. And then I want to send notifications to both myself and my wife that says the water is shut off and there's 10 minutes of runtime left on the UPS. So the water is shut off. And this is an alert circle and the color is red. I strongly recommend that you guys configure these notifications or at least a notification that tells you when the power is out. And if you don't have a UPS, you really should get one. Uh, it will keep your internet connectivity up. It'll keep your home assistant up to send you these notifications. And you can use it to keep your sump pump running if you live in a part of the country that does have a basement and a sump pump. I know there are lots of parts in the country that do not have sump pumps. So 
Lucky you, I suppose. Uh, basements are nice for storage, though. Uh, and my office, where I'm filming this, is also in the basement. So I kind of like that, too. But in any event, if you have a basement, I strongly suggest you get a UPS. And I strongly suggest that you configure this stuff. If you've made it this far, I'd just like to thank you for watching. I hope that you liked this episode's t-shirt, and I hope that you enjoyed the content, and I hope you found it informative, and I hope that I accomplished my goal of teaching you about Network UPS tools. If you'd like to support the channel, please drop by my Patreon page and check that out. Patrons get all sorts of benefits, ranging from access to downloadable code for all my videos, to early access to ad-free videos, to Discord access, to regular copies of my automations, dashboard, and configuration YAML files, and much, much more. Benefits start at just three US bucks per month. To all my current patrons, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?